Hello everybody and welcome to a Wild Camper's Diary. My name is Ben and the aim of this podcast is for me to offer you my thoughts on the world of wild camping, reflections and insights on my own experiences and hopefully, fingers crossed, some inspiration along the way. So, welcome to, rather aptly, where have I been? And indeed, where have I been? Um, well, I've been rather busy. Uh, I must, I must, uh, all joking apart, I must start off by just apologising for the, the lack of podcast episodes in, in recent months. It's been about five months. I'm just going to just put my cards on the table, I fess up. Um, I actually had to, to log into my own Apple Podcasts account <laughs> to see um, when the last one was and what it was. And it was actually, it was back in March and it was just before I went off on the South Downs Way and it was the podcast episode where I was just doing my final preparation and just kind of giving you my final thoughts before I, before I headed out and did that 100 mile through hike. So uh, a lot has happened um, since then. Uh, if you follow my YouTube channel, uh, then you'll, you'll have a bit of an idea of what's been going on. But but uh, yeah, I, I just I haven't really got a, a massive plan for this episode apart from just to let you know what I've been doing and what I've been up to. Um, so so yeah, I uh, last episode was in March, as I mentioned, and in April, April the first, <laughs> April Fool's Day, I left Winchester and I walked one hundred miles all the way to Eastbourne um, on the South Downs Way. And if you're not familiar with national trails you're not from from the uk um the south downs way is the only national trail that is completely within one of our national parks so it starts in the south downs national park and it finishes in the south downs national park which is quite nice um it was my first through hike and it was brilliant um there were some ups and downs no pun intended uh, but yeah, overall, it was an incredible experience. Um, I'm very pleased with how it went. I'm pleased with the the vlogs, um, the sort of the video documenting that came out of it. And if you've not seen that, if you go to my YouTube channel, you will be able to kind of catch up on all of that. And I've I've uploaded it in episodes, but I've also um, uploaded a kind of full length kind of film movie version, if you like, of it, which is about an hour and 25 minutes, um, which I've since discovered some people like to watch, just like to sit down and watch the whole adventure from start to finish. Um, so that's that's worth noting. And I've noted that sort of for future kind of video making I do um, when I'm walking these trails. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, I learned a lot about through hiking. Um, I learned a lot about doing it on your own because I was out there for six and a half days on my own. Um, and I discovered quite a lot about myself as well. And um, yeah, I know it, it sounds a bit cheesy, you know, the whole self-discovery thing, but actually there's a lot in it. And I really would encourage uh, anyone really, whatever age you are, to spend an extended period of time on your own uh, with nature in the outdoors because um, it, it really did me a lot of good. Um, I, I was asked when I returned whether I kind of thought about certain things going on in my life and yeah there was a little bit of that but but actually I, f I put it to one side not in, not in a kind of running away from it but actually just going back to focusing on the day to day on putting one foot in front of the other making sure i was going going to get to the next town or hill or camp or whatever it is on time making sure um my feet were in good condition you know i didn't have any hot spots so making sure i had enough water i was eating enough and uh, you know all of that and i was dry and <laughs> uh, from from rain and mud and everything and and actually that was wonderful, just thinking about that and nothing else, not thinking about family, not thinking about work or bills or mortgages or anything like that, but actually just that alone. Um, and it was very, very satisfying. Um, so so yeah, I, I um, originally planned to do it, I think in six days, five or six days, which I think was probably a little bit over ambitious for my first through hike. Um, and so I ended up doing it in six and a half days, um, which was 
fine. So I think I was averaging about 15 to 20 miles a day, probably 15, actually no, probably 15 to 17 miles a day. I was kind of averaging and I learned just to kind of, as time went on, to kind of go with the flow, listen to my body, not beat myself up. You know, if I only feel like doing 12 miles, just do 12 miles. If I feel like doing 19, 20 miles, do that. And um, that was a big takeaway. That was a really big takeaway for me is just to be adaptive and and just to, to hike my own hike, as, as they say. Um, I think it was day two where I, I realized I had the wrong sleeping bag <laughs> in my rucksack and um, it was unusually cold in April. Um, those of you that, that live in England and in Southern England will remember back in April, it, we had that cold snap and it got down to about minus one, minus two um, out in the South Downs and also I'm, I'm quite exposed out there as well so it felt colder and it was a thicker frost um, I remember when I, when I woke up at the 50 mile point in, in Amberley my there was ice in my bottle so that gives you an idea of how cold it got uh, for April and April is a bit of a funny month really because it can kind of go either way I mean I remember growing up having snow in April but then I've known it to be really balmy and warm and uh, so yeah you never know what way it's going to go um, Having said that, I, I, it was a good month and it was a good season to, to hike it in. It wasn't busy. I met one or two people doing it, which was nice occasionally, but the majority of the time I was on my own. Um, uh, but I think if I'd done it now, kind of in summer, um, it would have been a lot more crowded um, and potentially hotter, even though we're not very, having a very hot summer, uh, it would have been warmer. So I don't have any regrets about doing it in April. Um, but yeah, just in terms of kind of sleeping bag, I, I, I think I learned from it just to take more than what I need. And I think that would be my, my other takeaway is, is in terms of sleeping bags is to not just go, not, not sort of think, oh, weight saving, weight saving. Oh, there, yeah, obviously that is kind of important, but, but actually, what what is one going to do when you do get that cold snap and obviously in the summer you can get cold snaps as well as in in the spring so so yeah so that was the that was the south downs way um and yeah got back from that um uh, i did a i did do another wild camp shortly after that um out in the surrey hills in a bivy bag just a bivy bag no tent no tarp and just um just yeah just like it was, it was really it was weird but nice just to arrive at this hill having not had to do any hiking but apart from one mile in I think from my car uh, and then just um, just to just to put my kit out and just lay out under the stars and that was lovely that was really nice I had a really good view of the stars that night and um, I think that was around about May time I think um, the other big thing is that I changed the name of my YouTube channel. So um, you'll know that to date I've been known as Londoner Outdoors on my YouTube channel. Um, and um, I, there is a video, I'm not going to go into all of it. There is a video explaining why, why I changed it. But, but, but yeah, I think doing the, doing the South Downs Way was a, was, a, was a big kind of turning point for me in, in kind of my outdoor interests and pursuits. And, and so... Um, I, yeah, I got rid of London Outdoors and it became Ben's Hikes and Camps and it, it still is Ben's Hikes and Camps which is which is fantastic um, and it just uh, it, it just sort of encompasses more about what I'm doing and where I'm going and the types of um, videos that I want to make um, and it's I, I, there's something about putting your name into it as well I think it just gives it more of a personal kind of touch and I got rid of the old logo and I've um, put my ugly mug in the in the youtube profile um <laughs> picture just to, i don't know actually i think it's something about people seeing a face um and i'll see how that goes i may i may uh, replace it with a logo i've started playing around with logos new logos but haven't quite got the design i'm happy with just yet so um we'll see how we go with that um and in terms of what else has been going on, I went and did the Pedders Way uh, in Norfolk a few weeks ago, um, and that is a 46 mile national trail. Um, it's an old Roman road stretching from a place called Nettishall Heath, um, which is sort of just above the Suffolk border, Suffolk Norfolk border. Um, and I hiked up to a place called Holm Next to the Sea, which is 
up uh, on the Norfolk coast uh, on the wash. Um, I managed to do that in two and a half days, um, which I'm, I'm actually, from a personal best point of view, I'm really pleased with. I, I managed to crack um, the 20 miles per day. Um, so I did that on day one, I think I did 20, and the next day I did about 19, and then I did the remaining sort of six and a half, seven on the, th on the final morning. So from a personal best point of view, I was, I was really pleased with that. Admittedly, admittedly, it is completely flat. <laughs> um, but even so, yeah, I was quite, I was quite proud of that, and I had a couple of cracking wild camps. Um, so the, the first one I had um, kind of done an online recce, if you like, and I'd, I'd, I'd gone onto the US maps and had a bit of a search and found this place at the twenty mile point. Um, it wasn't open access land, so I didn't know whether it was going to be accessible, but it was right next to the. Right, literally right next to the trail so I thought that there's there's a possibility I might be able to find a way in so I decided to take the risk and, and head for that and it was great um, and there is a video up um, if you want to have a look at that uh, it's episode one of the Pedders, Pedders Way um, and I took my Lanshan 2 Pro which is my single skin hiking tent trekking pole tent and put that up in the woods and it was a lovely lovely camp that I had a really nice sunset kind of shining into the tent and I felt comfortable I didn't really feel on edge um, th there was a there was a couple of walkers that walked by and I'm sure they noticed me but I just didn't really make a thing of it and it was fine and it just felt comfortable and I think there are sometimes the thing with wild camping after doing many wild camps is that there's just a feeling you get when it's sort of going to be okay you just time has gone by you've not seen anyone you're kind of laying low you just allowing yourself to kind of decompress from the day and just enjoy the sounds and all the rest of it of the of the woods or wherever you nature wherever you're at um and then the second wild camp i did was uh, interestingly in a graveyard of a church um that i had contacted um whilst i was on the trail um to ask if i could put my tent up in their grounds and they said yes and i've had a bit of a mixed reaction on that i've had people who've been quite surprised being vehemently against that saying no no I couldn't do that that's too weird and then I've had some people saying oh actually yeah that's I hadn't thought about that and um, I didn't have an issue with it at all it was more about just finding the flattest parts to really to put my tent up and, and my, my response to people was um, well the thing is if you've walked 20 miles and you're absolutely knackered and it's been raining and you know there is someone has said that you can put your tent up on their land regardless if it's a, um, a graveyard or not then you I think maybe people would think differently when they were in that situation um, the other option is and it was raining a, quite a lot at this at this point when I arrived which is about seven in the evening you could just well, carry on traipsing up the trail looking into farmers fields having a look and see where you can sort of hide away um, the wild camping opportunities are better nearer the beginning to the middle point of the um, the Pedders Way. Uh, it's a little bit harder on the second half, I would say. It's not impossible, but it's a bit harder. Um, but it did get me thinking about wild camping in graveyards and about actually not, you know, from, just simply from a practical point of view, not from a morbid point of view. Um, it's something I'd, I would do again, actually, and I would I would think about. I had already contacted the church. Um, for water um, because they had a, a water refill point and um, I was planning to stop off there for water and then I just sent them another email whilst I was en route and and said oh how would you feel about me putting my tent up and you know I and I, I just said I said look I'm a respectful hiker and wild camper I always you know you wouldn't know that I'd been there and um, you know they can only say no that's 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 why it's the way I thought about it and they said yeah no problem so maybe consider that um, if you're ever out and you're a bit stuck and you're worried about where you're going to put your tent up um, I wouldn't do it without asking that's the only thing I definitely wouldn't just put my tent up in without asking um, unless it was a, a complete emergency um, but yeah it's always good, always, always good to ask um, so yeah so that, that was the most recent project and then um, because I, I work in education I've been off on the school holidays um, nice long summer holiday so I've just been uh, kind of doing family things um, I what else did I do oh yeah I went I went 
uh, on a, uh, a kayaking trip with my friend Alex in Surrey and we met up and got our inflatable kayaks out, dusted them off. Uh, we both admitted to each other that we hadn't used them for uh, one to two years so we're, we're a little bit feeling like we were amateurs um, but we headed down to the river way, found a launch spot and we had a nice little, I think it was a uh, four hour um, little paddle up the river and back and it was great I really really enjoyed that um, that time and um, it was just very relaxing not hiking not camping um, you know we took some some supplies and we took a stove and we made some coffee on the on the riverbank uh, at one point and it was great pretty warm actually it was pretty strong sunshine um, but a really great trip and um, it's something I I want to do again. I mean, I I don't know if I'm going to be doing it all year round. I don't know if I'm going to be one of those kinds of kayakers, but um, I, I I wouldn't mind maybe combining it with a wild camp. What do you think? Uh, don't know. I've seen some people do that with um, more robust vessels, uh, such as people like sort of Kent Survival, Simon a Bloke in the Woods, um, YouTubers, wild campers, seasoned fellows who. Uh, I've done, done it with those kind of Canadian style canoes, you know, out in, in um, Scandinavia or, or whatever. So uh, there's me with my hundred quid inflatable kayak. I don't know if it will work, uh, but maybe it would. So that's something I'm chewing over and having a think about possibly a camping and kayaking trip. Um, and in terms of kind of future plans, uh, if you've not sort of been tuned into my YouTube channel next year I'm going to be walking Wainwright's coast to coast um, uh, which will be in August next year that's the the, the the time that I have the slot available to do it um, and that is 192 miles so that will be my my biggest walk yet and I'm taking two weeks off to do that and I'm going to spend the next 11 months preparing for it, which is exciting. Having all that time just to kind of save up for, for kit and to keep practicing and training and learning and talking to other people that have done it, which I've already started doing and already you know, getting ideas and um, suggested routes and things to avoid and things to buy and, and all of that. So I think one of the things with wild camping and hiking that I really like is the it's the planning that goes into it that's almost as exciting you know just sitting down and studying maps and choosing kit or snapping up a bargain on ebay or or a gadget or something um yeah so so that's the big one that's the uh the big goal for next year i've got a big birthday next year so it's pretty significant so i wanted to do uh, a big walk for my big birthday um and uh yeah I, Obviously, in terms of training, I'm going to have to sort of take a similar similar approach as I did the training for the South Downs Way, where um, you know I can't replicate the uh, the coast to coast walk in the southeast of England. You know, the trail is obviously very different, um, but I can walk and I can hike and I can do long distances and and just build stamina and um, and just sort of you know build up my my mental strength as well with it um, and that's what that's what I plan to do that's what I plan to do um, I am going to try and get up to the Lake District well I'm not going to try I am going to go to the Lake District um, and I'm going to do a couple of camps and walks up there um, just just to familiarize myself with terrain uh, and just the environment that I'm going into because if you, if you don't know the the first kind of third of the walk the coast to coast walk is across the Lake District um, which uh, has a plethora of fells, mountains, um, you know, elevation, loose rock, uh, all sorts of things that we just don't have in the southeast of England. So that is something that I, I definitely want to um, to go and familiarise myself with. I won't be able to go loads, but if I get up a couple of times, it'll it, it'll just um, it'll be good for me. I think it'll be good. Um, so that's about it, really. That is about it. Um, that's where I've been. I've been okay. Um, it's just, it's just time, you know, getting a lot of stuff done. And you know, the last few months, especially up to to sort of April and after April, kind of May, was preparing for the South Downs Way, doing the South Downs Way, and then I had to do so much editing. 
um, I had hundreds and hundreds of, of videos that I had to go through and stitch together and edit and upload to YouTube and it just takes so much time and so the podcast had to kind of take a bit of a back seat um, uh, and then there's sort of you know life thing life things sort of happen and um, the podcast got got a little bit neglected I'm afraid but but uh, hopefully this will um, spur me on to do a few more episodes and uh, yeah so if you've if you enjoyed this one uh, and if you're able uh, on whatever platform you're you're listening you're able to leave any kind of review or feedback that would be fantastic um, you can't send me an Instagram message at the moment because I'm taking a bit of a break from uh, Instagram and social media so I'm not really contactable um, but yeah thank you so much uh, for for sticking with the podcast uh, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed this one just kind of catching up on what, what's been going on and yeah um, I look forward to producing another episode and seeing you again on a wild campers diary <laughs>